A Ball and MJG, Dope. UGK, Outkast, yeah. Three Six Mafia, and Goody Mob. Those Ooh. are my groups from that time. That's hard. Those are my That's groups hard. from that time, and we can argue about them however you want to do it. Boss talk one on one. Yeah, we gonna talk. I want to talk about the podcast, man. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, man. Like I said, you do a great job. Thank and you. uh, I mean, the things that got me in tune with you was Pimpin' Ken, mm-hmm. was Bun B, yeah, and uh, who else? Oh, KL, KLC, yeah, that's KL, my boy, yeah. man. Like, I rock yeah. with them. Them, my hey, that's the three tribes that's right. right there. That's to, right. Get a nigga on over there. <laughs> you know, I'm a, ignore this nigga. Then, nah, I can't ignore this. This nigga, all right, huh? Exactly. Me, you know, just showing you how you yeah. when you go in, but. I just love the fact, and and then like I said, Crunchy Black, that nigga cried. I think I think he did to me. The fucking died, nigga. You should have told me you were ready to go. Maybe I would have went with you. Yeah. I ain't never seen nobody get that sentimental on there. Never, my nigga. Yeah. When he died, I died. I'm yeah. like, man, now, how how did you end up? And that's an interview that sticks out to me, like. To keep your composure and to keep that going, I know you didn't see it coming out mm-hmm. like that. You know, how did you keep and maintain, you know, your your position? Well, I felt this pain. Wow. That was just the bottom line. I felt this pain. Now, hell, I wanted to cry with the nigga. <laughs> Real you see what I'm saying? Like, Real no, time. man, I feel yeah. your pain. Yeah, yeah. my eye might have got a little twitchy. Yeah, you might have got one or two eyes. You see what I'm yeah. saying? So it's like, hurry up, you for the camera get back on me. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, I felt this pain because, I mean, you come up with somebody, you grow up with somebody like that, it hurts yeah. when they pass, you know. And then, you know, to compound that with the loss of his daughter and everything else at the same time and just the pain from life in general yeah. is enough to make you, you know, go there at that yeah. time. So, you know, Crunchy, and then Crunchy know I'm family, man. So, you know, I got love for Crunchy. He got love for me, man. And I, he knows that I'm not there to, you know, exploit him in any kind yeah. of way or nothing yeah. like that. He know that I genuinely give a damn about what's going, what's going on. on. And uh, when that happened, I mean, I just felt this pain. That, wow. that, that was the main thing with that. It was like, you know what, let them get it out and let them talk about it. Because at the end of the day, hell, Therapy. niggas get together all the time and yep. folks yep. cut a fool. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Whether we screaming, yelling, acting a Come fool, on, just so happy that the camera was on that day. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. You gotta sit right there and let somebody cut up, and then you come back in with what you got to say to keep them going. Well, you know, and and... Another thing, you know, like I said, that was one of the ones that stuck out. Uh, that wicked guy over there with you. Yes, sir. Yeah, always arguing and talking yeah. crazy and yeah. saying <laughs> some stuff that I be getting upset about. Yeah. The eight ball and yeah. UGK. Yeah. Don't play with UGK. I'm real crazy yeah. about this stuff. But I, I love the chemistry because it seems as if you, you know, y'all are well balanced. You yeah. know what I mean? Y'all rock out together in a way to where it makes sense. You yeah. know what I mean? But I, and then y'all captured subjects that's happening. I'll be watching all that. Yeah. I'll be loving the fact that you know you get. I, I look at yours and I'll be like, dang, okay, he went in on that yeah. or yeah. stuff that you know. So you got. How did you and Wicked get so cool? Okay, see, we he was one of the artists. So when I was at Hot One Hundred Seven Nine, okay. Not only was I breaking new artists, but I was also bringing the artists that I grew up listening to to the radio station as well. Mm-hmm. Because how it used to happen at the radio back during that time, it was one of those things to where if you were if you weren't hot, then you had to go to hell. Okay. And that's just what it was. You have your three, four year run, and then after that, nobody want to hear from your mm-hmm, ass again. Mm-hmm. And that's just how hip hop was going at that time. So for me coming into the game, I saw that and I was like, nah, that ain't going to work. Yeah, these folks still got the same fan base. Just because their song ain't playing on the radio don't mean they ain't still hot. That's real. Right. You see what I'm saying? They still got a story to tell. And they got, a, they got a fan from. base. They got a fan base. And as they well. got a fan yeah. base. So Wit was one of those folks, you know, Ghetto Mafia, I bring them in there, you know, we'll go into that straight from the deck and stuff like that. And uh as well as Turk too. And yeah, I seen Turk on there a lot. Yeah, yeah. Now Turk another one of my podcast partners. So with Wit, he uh when it was during COVID and I was getting ready to get that office. So that's when the game changed from the podcast. Mm. And this is when I realized that, okay, if I'm going to make this a business now, I have to make sure that I can always create content. content. Okay. So you're going to have to have some podcast partners. Okay, that you fucking with on a regular basis that you could talk to and mm-hmm. create content with. And you're also going to have to have some topics to be able to talk about. That's right. And, you know, argue on the show just to have a damn show going that's on right. at the that's same right. time, too. So that's when my main concept then became hip-hop debates. So what I wanted to do and bring to the game was that 
no longer would you have to just sit there and interview somebody to have content. We could talk about the culture and debate yep, the yep, culture, yep. whether it's old, past, present, or future, and we could have a uh, you know uh, inspiring com- uh, conversation doing that. So with Wick, we started debating Eight Ball and MJG. I know. And UGK. That's that was problem. one of our first debates. I know. That was a yeah. problem. Yeah. yeah. See, that, that, yeah. With me, yeah. that becomes an issue real fast. And yeah, I love A Ball. I love A Ball. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. Oh, yeah. Now, I'm a big. I, you, it's going to be hard to get around A Ball and MJG and them beats and the, they produce right. and all that stuff. Right. But there's a difference. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know I'm from Texas. So you can you from Atlanta, yeah, so you yeah, can really yeah, you they yeah, Memphis and yeah. but they you know Tony Draper was they was in Texas they was yeah, in Houston yeah, yeah you know so that was a lot of influence yeah that's yeah. all I'm saying don't give my guy the edge <laughs> <laughs> the influence is, is something in itself I mean A Ball and MJG don't. UGK Outkast yeah Three Six Mafia and Goody Mob those Ooh. are my groups from that time. <laughs> That's hard. Those are my That's groups hard. from that time, and we can argue about them however you want to do it. But you every said time. Now, now go back. You said Eight Ball and MJG, mm-hmm. and Eight Ball and MJG had a problem with Mr. Mike when he was there. But that nigga was serious. I'm just gonna go and tell you right yeah. now. You can say that. You yeah. can say whatever. But I go get the ta- the tapes. You can go get the CDs and the tapes, nigga. Yeah. And I'm gonna promise yeah. you. You're not going to ignore Mr. Mike That's in South right. Circle. That's right. But Mr. That's Mike right. himself, that tonality and all that he was doing in the I mix agree. of that. I agree. You can't leave him out. Come and on. I, and then when I went and interviewed, it was like, I can't leave you out, bro. I love you, bro. Exactly. Because of your voice and the way your tone is and the way you was delivering exactly. those, those, those rhymes. Nobody wasn't doing it like him Facts. during that time. Facts. Believe me. Facts. How you going to be pinnacle in the Mr. 8-Ball and MJG? I mean, Big Mike. Yeah. That Big he, Mike. Yeah, that's another that's Mike. A, that's an argument right saying, there, man. man. He, gotta, he gonna jam with uh, UGK and a ball MJG. Man, what you talking? Big about? Mike is another bad Big Mike, Mike in this thing. Man, let me tell you. So I always compare that some serious to yeah. back when you got realize that was the nineties, early nineties. Yeah. Chronic came out. Yeah. And I say you niggas don't talk about some serious, and I got a problem with that. <laughs> you, you can't not talk about some serious because I had both of them in exactly. the car in that in that Monte Carlo Come all, on that, now. all that cutlass. Yeah. With the 305. I had exactly. all that going on. Yep. And I might pick the chronic or I might pick <laughs> some serious. Come on. Am I right? Exactly. <laughs> but, exactly. But you don't hear that. You don't hear that kind of talk. You don't that don't from the east and the west coast, I don't think they seen it the way we seen it. And yeah. and, and I and I res, I get it, but I gotta be true to myself when it comes down to these southern artists. That's something that I push on this channel. Exactly. Like, I'm not for to be biased. I'm gonna do I'm gonna live my truth. Yeah. My truth is I was here and I'm exactly. an older nigga. So exactly. I was listening to it. I was consuming it. You Come know on. what I'm saying? Come so on. I know what I was consuming and how I was consuming exactly. it. Exactly. You talk you talk about Mr. Mike. Let's go to another one. You got Magic Mike. Yeah. Stop playing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The bass. So Come the on. Bass, yeah. so that bass, yeah. I had eight yeah. in the truck. Yeah. Come so on. So you now. can't, it's all kind of stuff going on in my car Come that on. tell me what to say on this exactly. podcast. You exact't. know what I'm saying? Exactly. And you're not going to come in here and say, I don't care who you is and tell me different. Exactly. I know because I lived it. That's you know right. what I'm saying? That's so right. when I hear your show, I really understand that you guys are standing on business when it come down to what you guys truly believed in. And, and I also, think that's what we need, bro. Also, it's creating a relevancy in the game. Come on now. So the whole thing is we trying to open up the doors and create a relevancy for OGs to be able to attack the game like they used to yeah. instead of being booted out the game and having to sit on the sidelines and watch the young folks have the time of their life. We said, no. Nah. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.